Disclaimer, I am not a Xilinx employee, nor am I affiliated with Xilinx. I simply decided to make this video because I struggled to find a similar video when I needed it. I cannot guarantee this will work for you. First, to get to this page, you should go to the Board Evaluation Kit web page and click Download Embedded Platforms to get to this download page. There are lots of different options, but I chose the single file all OS download because using Manjaro Linux, uh, this is easier to use to install um, since the GUI is not perfectly supported. Now to download these files from the Xilinx website, you will have to create an account with them and enter your company and organization details. You need to sign the agreement by typing your name. Additionally, to Vitis itself, you need to download the base platforms for the ZCU102 board, as well as the common image, Peta Linux, and the Peta Linux board support package for the board. Before installing, you want to make sure that you have all the dependencies of the installers themselves and also the dependencies of the programs that you're installing here. I use the Manjaro Linux official community and Arch user repositories to install these packages, but depending on your distribution, this might be different. However, I added this link to the description. Additionally, you may want to install the Noto fonts package as this is recommended for appearance on Linux distributions. You can install all the dependencies of Vivado uh, and Vitis with that uh, using the Xilinx Vivado dummy package on Arch Linux. Having installed all the dependencies, we can actually start the installation process. Since Peta Linux was downloaded first for me, I am starting with Peta Linux. Now to run the Peta Linux installer, you need to add the permission using chmod plus x Peta Linux installer. Then you need to create the directory you want to install it to, and then you can specify this uh, when you run the installer using the D flag. After running the installer, you have to accept three license agreements, and then the installation will proceed. Now, after installation, switch to the install directory and make sure that the TFTPD service is enabled and start it. You can start this service using sudo systemctl enable tftpd.service and then systemctl.start tftpd.service. And you can source the newly created settings shell script and you're done installing Peta Linux. You need to source this script every time you use Peta Linux in a new shell window, but the GUI usually handles this for us. To install the base platform, you simply copy the base platform into your desired location. I chose OptXilinx platforms and I'm just simply copying the zip here and then unzipping the file into the directory. Now I'm done installing the base platform. To create a bootable image after the hardware build, you need the common image. You can extract the image into an auto-detected subfolder and then within the subfolder extract the root file system archive. This produces the SDK shell file, which you can then execute to install the board platform. The script generates the platform files in opt peta linux 2020.2, which you can check out right after installing the SDK. And you can find a few scripts as well as the x86-64 peta linux, as well as the arch64, that is the board platform architecture sysroot files. Now, if you're gonna use this in the future, you will need to execute the environment setup script as the install script will describe, but generally I haven't needed to execute this uh, as the GUI seems to take care of this on its own. Now that we've installed Peta Linux, the common image, as well as the Bates platform, we can now actually install the Vitus Unified platform. Now, since I downloaded the single file uh, installer, I need to actually extract the file and then run the X setup script. Now, 
the unified installer will launch up and you can simply select next to install your tools you can select what you want to install here i would install vitis since that's what we're trying to do here and you can customize your installation to whatever you want to install or not install as i am low on space using in this video i deselected some platforms though do make sure not to unselect the install devices for lvo and xlinx edge acceleration platforms because even if you're just using an, an mpsoc uh, these files are necessary for installation and you also don't need the cable drivers on linux but on windows you also have to install these cable drivers if you're on Windows and you can't install Peta Linux in the standard way, you can also actually install it using uh, a previous Linux-based installation and copying the sysroot files. Now you need to agree to the license agreements and choose where you want to install Xilinx, the Xilinx tools, which is Vitus Vivado and Vitus HLS. Since my home partition is on a different drive, I select, decided to install it on the home where I have more space. You can also create the program group entries though, because I previously installed Xilinx Vitus 2020.1, I already have these entries. So I skip that and click next. Now you can start the installation. For me, this took about one hour and 11 minutes. After installing, I decided to run the install libs sh script, which was created by the installer. Um, this is not necessarily always required, though it is recommended, especially on the also supported operating systems. To run Vitis, you can source the setting64 script and simply run the bin Vitis HLS or Vitis, pro depending on which subfolder you're in. As you can see here, I am running Vitus HLS and it just simply doesn't work. This is a prime example of why you should actually use one of the supported distributions and our operating systems. Um, Vitus HLS 2020.2 for me does not properly start. I lost my Linux installation after recording and I'm now on Windows, but uh, this person in the Xilinx forum suggests that it might have something to do with the network stack and activating a more NAT-based system. However, if the GUI doesn't work, you can use the I flag when starting Vitus IHLS, and that way you will be able to use the program, just not the GUI. I will also show this later. Now to start Vitus, it's the same process. You go to the Vitus subfolder, you go to the 2020.2 subfolder, you source the setting 64 script, and you start bin Vitus. Um, now for me, this GUI actually does work and uh, it's starting up perfectly for me. Now you want to create an application project and use the board support package you downloaded earlier in order to use the preset settings and templates and create a project. Now this is where you want to use the previously created sysroot path from Peta Linux, the root file system from the common image, as well as the kernel image from the common image. From here you can simply continue and then select one of the templates here. For me, they didn't load yet, so I have to actually download the Vitus IDE examples and I can see some examples. The Hello World kernel, for example, will show me uh, an example of how I can develop a uh, host OpenCL application and use the hardware accelerator to actually execute the program. Mm, these don't necessarily work because they are made for the LVO cards oftentimes. Some of the examples may work for the ZC01022. But I personally made the experience that I just have to make it myself. Mm. Now, since we don't really want to emulate and we're just building a very simple hardware accelerator that says hello world, uh, we can simply select hardware as the build target. And while we were at it, we can also check a kernel project, a hardware link project, as well as an Xilinx runtime project, which is just a 
normal host project to build, you can use the assistant window and click on, right click on the hardware build element of the system project. Now, since the installation is actually already finished and we are waiting for the build process to finish, we can also delete the installation files, most of them except for the common image which was extracted since this is where we just extracted in the downloads folder. I'm deleting these now because the build process actually usually requires quite a bit of space, a few gigabytes will be required. So I just deleted these here. After the build is done, you'll be able to see the hardware files and the result of the build process in the system project file directory. You'll be able to see a package folder as well as an SD card folder within that package folder, which actually also is the content of this SD card image, which is used to flash the SD card and put it into the ZC or one or two board in order to be able to boot the Peta Linux image that contains the hardware accelerator file as well as the host test bench file. You only need to flash this image the first time afterwards you can use various ways to actually access the board and copy the files there you can either extract the sd card and just mount the sd card and copy the files onto there or you can uh, secure shell into the board and use something like sftp that i'll show you later actually now, to have an overview of the actual overall design flow, I'll go back to Vitus HLS, but since the GUI doesn't work, I will just show you the CLI flow. Luckily, it's almost the same. You simply have to create a project. That's a very straightforward process. You have to import your sources or actually create them and write them yourself to be able to synthesize an output. Now, I start up the Vitus HLS using the I flag to, I assume for interactive, to start the CLI version. And since I already have some project files from a previous project, I'll just use these for this. It's simply just creating the files and synthesizing them. The process goes as follows. After opening the project and opening the solution itself up, which you can see here in the project files, um, you just have to start the csim command or in the in the GUI there's a, a button for it. And you'll see that the execution follows if you didn't make any mistakes and is executed on the processing system. To execute this csim, you actually need to create a test bench file that calls your supposed hardware function and um, if you want accurate timing measurements, you will need to execute it more than once. But if you don't need that, you can also just execute it once in the test bench file using some test input. By executing, I mean just simply calling the function once, um, Vitus HLS actually kind of converts this automatically. After C simulation, you want to start the C synthesis using the C synth command. And during this step, the console window will output lots of useful information. It'll output a final estimated maximum frequency. It'll output the critical path, for example. Uh, so you can actually determine which part of your program or sometimes even which line of code is actually the most expensive for your hardware and thus optimize further. After the C synthesis, uh, if you're building a very complex design or the correct hardware is very important to you, you can also start a CRTL code simulation, which will then uh, first run the C code on, on the machine and then simulate the hardware to actually check if the outputs are the same. If they are indeed the same, the code simulation was successful and you're recommended to continue to actually export the RTL. It's important to export it using a Vitus kernel or an Excel file. And uh, you can do this using the export design command uh, and then using a file name as an output. And you can see the updated 
file name for my project. This is a star.xl since my program was actually accelerating a star. After exporting the iStar kernel, uh, I can now use it in the Vitus kernel project and add it as a hardware function in order to actually make it a hardware accelerated program. You also will need to import the test bench file, which uh, to actually, because the test bench file calls the accelerated function, you also need to import the non-test bench, the, the accelerated functions into the host project. But uh, if you execute it this way, it will still accelerate the hardware. Um, but usually you would end up creating some kind of library for this, I assume, and then uh, use OpenCL to actually access the hardware. Though for this purpose, it, it does work to accelerate it this way. You can also see that the hardware link project automatically took over the same A star hardware function, and it means that the processing system and hardware system are linked together. We can now build the hardware, and after building, you'll find the actual files as before in the system hardware project. Now, for me, starting the hardware build actually crashed uh, the application because it used up all the 16 gigabytes of RAM in my system. As you can see, it's quite a heavy consumption, but um, the Vivado processes actually stayed alive, so I was able to uh, just wait until they are finished and restart Vita Vitus, which then said that the build had previously failed, but after restarting it, the, the files were still there. And when I restarted the build, the build was already finished and just continued to packaging the SD card image into the new hardware package system image. Now, since I already flashed my board before, uh, but I didn't actually have access physically to it anymore, I asked a coworker to actually start up the board for me uh, so that I can secure shell into it remotely and copy the files so you don't need to actually once you flashed one of the images to the SD card you don't need to access the board physically you can um, put these files on the partition remotely you don't need to reboot either you can then just start the program on the board using an SSH session I simply just overwrote the files and started the SSH session to access the board and I initiated the script, which this is not always necessary in my experience somehow, but uh, they do recommend to do this. Uh, it's supposed to load up the hardware code onto the FPGA fabric. After opening up the init script, you can now execute the application by simply using the project name and uh, executing the file that is there. And as you can see, this was executed and the speeds do suggest that it is ex indeed actually accelerated. That's it from me today. I hope you learned something. I hope you could take something away from this video and, um, well, let me know if you liked it or if you want something else in the comment section.